Today we're talking all about Feminine Miss India 2023 and if it's unclear, just to let you know, the winner of this competition will go on to compete at the Miss World pageant. If you are looking for a recap for Miss Universe India, the winner of that title is crowned at the Miss Diva pageant. So they're a little bit different. My name is Danny. if you're new here. If you enjoy content like this, please consider subscribing and hitting that notifications bell. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by hitting that super thanks, shopping in the merch store, or joining memberships for access to exclusive episodes. Thank you so much for all the requests for this episode, by the way. I really enjoyed this show. First of all, opening of the show was so strong this show honestly it feels like an award show slash just this professional bollywood production that is one thing that you can always expect from this organization that is high quality performances but more than that i love how they incorporate their former title holders their reigning title holders the the dance numbers here are just mind-blowing and every time I watch this show, even though there's no technical talent competition that is required, I always think, well, you kind of have to be a great dancer though, I guess, to win because these formers end up being a part of these really elaborate productions. Something that stood out to me about this year's show is when the contestants walked out for their introductions that the camera angles were almost Miss France-esque. So they had a really long runway. We saw these full body shots pan from the feet to the face. I feel like the only thing that was missing was maybe some wind in the hair and some slow-mo shots, but they did a really, really great job with this. It looked amazing. Now, I do wish we would have seen all of the contestants though in bright colors. We saw that later, they brought them out in different groups, but the first group came out in all black outfits and I just felt like in a way they were kind of at a disadvantage just because the other contestants got to wear brighter colors that stood out quite a bit more on stage. This pageant is a little bit unique because of their areas of competition and the way that they select their delegates. So as of now, there is no swimsuit competition at the Miss World pageant, which is why I think they don't have a swimsuit suit competition here. So first we see the ladies in cocktails, then we see them come out in beautiful evening gowns. Instead they come out in groups, so it's a really quick just first impression. So I'm wondering in terms of scoring, are the ladies coming out and the semi-finalists have already been decided based off of prelims, or are the judges submitting any kind of new score during the finals when the ladies come out in their gowns? After they were in their gowns, they came out, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it, it would either be a sari or a lenka. I don't exactly know the difference. I believe that the sari is just entirely wrapped, but the lenka is, is two pieces. So I technically don't know exactly what they were wearing, but they were beautiful. And I do know that I got to wear a lenka to Miss Utah USA 2018's wedding. She had multiple ceremonies, and a part of that was an Indian ceremony. So I got to wear a beautiful one that I borrowed from Shri Sani, who actually represented America at Miss World. She was first runner up, and she sent me literally a box of them. And I chose this one, and I loved it. I thought it was so beautiful. From 30 finalists, they narrowed it down to a top 12. And this top 12 got to give an introduction on stage. And this isn't quite as common in Miss Age divisions when we're talking about international competitions, but it is something I like and enjoy. This is also something that we see at the Miss France pageant. I wanna apologize if I mispronounce any of these names. I was doing my best to listen to them during the show and, and try to pronounce them correctly. I'm gonna do my best here, but just keep that in mind. First in the top 12, we had a and she shared that when she was eight years old that her father left their family and that her mother's strength inspired her and now she's a lawyer. So I really like that she shared that. I thought it was very relevant to who she is and how she became the woman that she is today and it really exhibits a great amount of strength that she's showing by sharing that story. So that was very nice in the top 12. I liked hearing that. Dauna Jam said that she experienced epilepsy induced by stress. She also said that music was a big part of helping her to heal and it gave her hope. She also is a business student and she had a very, very subtle pause. And the moment that I heard that, I was like, oh no, she's either gonna push through or she's gonna be thrown off track. And she pushed through. It was ever so subtle, but I listen to speeches every single day. So I noticed it. 
but she did such a great job and she wrapped up by saying that she was promote, wants to promote education that is child-friendly education. Nandini shared that she is a farmer's daughter. She talked about the message of having faith in the process. She says that because of this, she's been able to come and rise out of all of her failures and she's ready to inspire others to master their own destiny. And when I heard this, I wondered, hmm, okay, so I wonder if she would really be advocating for the power of mindset as a title holder. Megan, I have to say, gorgeous, first of all, by the way. And honestly, these ladies just all gorgeous. I feel like the hair and makeup team this year just stepped it up, oh my goodness. So Megan, the one thing I will say is that her hand movements were like this when she was speaking and that was really distracting for me. I tried to overlook that. Now she talked about moving a lot when she grew up. She participated in sports and then she shared about how difficult it was when her father had a heart attack, but she never told us if he lived. So we don't know if he lived and that was kind of the note that I ended on, just wondering did her father recover from that heart attack. But aside from that, she still did a great job speaking on stage. Apoorva talked about stepping outside of your comfort zone and that that can lead to your legacy. She shared that she is a dancer and also a software engineer. And I really felt like she was just getting started with her speech and then suddenly she was cut off. Hers, for some reason, felt a little bit shorter to me than the other contestants. And I wanted just, just like a sentence more from her. Shaswati shared that she was an underconfident young girl that became a model. She also talked about being a design graduate and digital illustrator. She lives by the principle of trying and never giving up. Now, I really, really liked her delivery of this. This stood out to me mainly because she felt so genuine to me when she spoke. Christina described herself as resilient and dedicated. She has a father who served in the military and her dad, and I love what she shared here, she said that her dad made her believe that not everyone serves in a uniform, but that she can have the same sense of service in a crown. I thought that was very clever. I just wish that she hadn't have paused so much in her delivery. She was really breaking up her sentences. She was separating everything. And I think that her speech itself needed a little bit more flow to it. Shreya says that she is a dreamer. She is also a finance student and an economics graduate. She started working as a teen in entertainment. She built a career of her choice and that her journey is a testament to the youth that no matter where you come from, that you can live out your dreams. And she really was passionate towards the end of her speech. I could feel her excitement and I actually love that. I love when I can feel the sincerity of a contestant and you know that she's not just saying words, but she's feeling them. Now we saw another dance number and there were neon outfits and it was fantastic. I can only imagine how much fun this show is in person because you would get to watch a pageant, but it's also kind of like you're at a concert. See, it gives me like award show vibes. Next, they cut to a top seven and oh my goodness, I don't know if I love these questions more or the ones at Bini Bini Filipinas this year. Super creative, lots to learn, and these ladies really did a phenomenal job with this. Aditi, if you could change one law, what would it be and why? And her response was, if I could change one law in our country, it would definitely be criminalizing marital rape. Because as girls, as women, we have the right to feel safe everywhere, but most importantly in our own household. And everyone should know that no means no, even if it is your husband. Dana John was asked a question, but it was not in English. I apologize for not having the translation, but I'm still gonna share her answer, and I feel like you can kind of guess what the question is based off of her answer. She said, I have personally faced a lot of failures in my life. Sadly, self-doubt, negativity, insecurities, it all comes with failure. And when you hit rock bottom, it is the most important and most crucial part of any human being because it can make you or it can break you. Failure has taught me to be humble, stay grounded, and be a nice person to everyone. I think that it is the most important. Love that. Love that. I mean, I love the first answer. Love this one. These ladies were solid. Nandini's question was this. If given a choice to change the world or to change yourself, 
What would you do and why? She said, I think I would change myself because just like appreciation comes from home and charity comes from home, change also comes from within. So if you have the power to change yourself, you can change the world because when you have the power to go through that change to accept the new you with discoverable qualities and the new you, you can create a more greater impact on the world. Amazing. Megan looking stunning as ever. She was asked, if you could choose only one option amongst money, power, or youth, what would you choose and why? She says, if I was a lot younger and didn't have a lot of responsibilities that I do now, I would choose youth. Only and only because I had the most amazing parents growing up and I would just love to relive that over and over again. But being much older now and being the only person who earns in my family, I would choose money. Only and only because it put my brother through education, help my relatives, because finance is everything these days. And that's what I would choose. Okay, Megan, the way that she delivered this felt so sincere and so heartfelt. And I felt her in that moment, her voice subtly cracked. And when the camera went right back to her, you could just see that what she was saying was true. And I completely relate with her. I understand what that's like. I work endlessly every single day on my channel and with my clients so that I can have those same opportunities to help my mom, to help care for my dogs as well when they need different things. And also it's just hard nowadays especially to even support yourself. And it is tough out there and I completely understand where she's coming from and I'm sure that many of you out there are relating to this right now. It, it, it's not easy to support yourself and your family anymore and it seems like opportunities are further and far between and that we have to work so much harder to get what our grandparents had two generations ago so it's tough and and I really felt her in that I really love that answer because I feel like it's so relatable to so many people especially right now Shreya got a question I really liked if you could introduce a new subject in school or college as part of the curriculum what subject would it be and why she says I think introducing a subject like civic behavior we could teach children to be more engaging and responsible citizens and I believe it would not only lead a positive change in our community and our country but in the world as a whole as well I agree with her. I think that could be a great course and it's also a very creative answer. After that we had another phenomenal performance which was super fun to watch. Just loving, loving all of it. I love all the arts. Then after that there was this moment where the top seven was serenaded in a way that I've really not seen before in pageants. It was quite a flirty performance and I was just like oh my, I mean I wouldn't oppose but it's just unique at a pageant. Now we have the results. Second runner up was Thauna Jam and I really saw her up there in that top three. I felt that she was such a heartfelt speaker and I know that can't really come across in episodes like this. You would have to watch it for yourself but she has such great delivery with her answers. First runner up was Shreya. Great strong answer. Phenomenal job. Also really loved her gown. It was one of my favorites. Then Feminine Miss India was Nandini. So very excited for her. Also she had a great great honestly Everybody here had such a great performance and I didn't follow this competition leading up to this. So I didn't have a lot of background about each of the contestants. Maybe you saw Nandini win and for you it was no surprise. Maybe you followed the pageant and you thought that she was the dark horse of the competition. I, I can't speak on that. If you have a perspective about that, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear that. I would really like to know what everybody else thought about these performances. But either way for me, when I saw the top seven, I thought that everybody did such a great job overall with these onstage questions that it could go a number of different ways. Now, as far as I know, like I said, the winner for this competition goes on to Miss World, but historically the first and second runner ups also go to other pageants. So I know that in the past they've gone to Grand Supra and then I also Wikipedia it and saw, which might not be accurate, but I saw that some other first and second runner ups have also represented India and Miss United continent. So that's a system I'm not really familiar with and I haven't recapped their shows yet. Let me know if you want me to. I'll see if it's on YouTube. Either way, I'm really excited. I'm not sure where these ladies will all be competing this year and things can change depending on the organization and 
them deciding to do what they see fit with their title holders. So we'll see. But thank you so much for tuning into this recap. I really hope that you enjoyed this one and that you had fun watching the show as well. Let me know what shows you want me to recap after this one because I'm always listening. I'm always paying attention to those comments and trying to get new ideas for episodes that you want to see so that hopefully you'll subscribe and that you'll come back for lots more of those. So in the meantime though, I hope that you'll check out these other two recent recaps that I created and I hope that you'll enjoy them just as much as this one. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope that I'll see you very soon.